Welcome to The Reality. Hello again, welcome to The Reality. So good to be with you once again, sharing the story of a life touched and changed for the good, for good, by the reality of knowing Jesus Christ. I'm Dudley Anderson, so good to be with you. I'll be uh, giving you my email address later on in the show. If you hear anything in today's program, just, you know, makes sense to you, or you have some questions or like some prayer, I would love to hear from you. But today we're going to be speaking to a, a wonderful young lady by the name of Lydia Beach. Lydia is a young teenage singer and musician. She appeared in the Voice Kids UK in 2020, wowing the audience with her, her charisma and assertive performance. On the Voice Kids stage, when quizzed about how long she'd been singing, Lydia said, I don't draw or do stuff like that because I am blind. I was in the car with my grandpa and he said that I had a really nice voice, so I started singing. Lydia was born with a condition that affected the retinas of her eyes, resulting in blindness. But Lydia says that she doesn't let anything hold her back, and her greatest ambition is to help people. An encouragement to us all to give our all for our all. So I've always wanted to help people. Helping people is a privilege. And when I can't, or I'm the one being served, being helped. Mm -hmm. And that is something that I think I really struggle with. Part of what being blind has given me is people skills that I probably wouldn't have acquired otherwise. I've learned to be good at communicating, at getting down to the root of, of someone's sort of psyche, I guess, figuring out what makes them tick, how best to interact. Lydia knows Jesus Christ as her personal Lord and Saviour. She sings in a church worship team and has a great ambition to use her voice for God's glory. I chat with Lydia Beach today via WhatsApp. Well, really my pleasure today to have uh, on WhatsApp chatting with Lydia Beach. Now, Lydia, I did introduce you as um, uh, being one of the contestants for The Voice Kids in the UK. That's a big program. It's it's uh, an international program, uh, and that's amazing. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But I'd like to ask you, uh, Lydia, you know Jesus as Lord and Savior. I believe you were born into a Christian family. How did you come to the point in your life where you said, OK, Jesus, I'm yours, and give your life to Jesus? For me, there was never a, a big moment or, or anything that happened in, in just one moment. It was more of a slow, slow um, journey that actually I don't think I've completely finished. Um, wow. I, I've always, as you said, I've always been in a Christian family, so I've always known Jesus. I think there's never been a time where, where I've really not thought that he was there or not factored him into a situation mm. um but i guess yeah i i had a pretty stable church life but i was never i was never completely 100 percent comfortable or settled because i was never really 100 percent comfortable or settled in most social situations right. I, I never really had the chance to be an overly sociable person i had a um you know a couple of closer friends and then a, a girl came to the youth group. There was a youth group that I had at my old church on Tuesday nights. Mm -hmm. And uh, a girl called Anjuna came to the group. And we got quite close. We were both, I think we both struggled to fit in. Uh, she ended up being diagnosed with autism. Obviously, I'm uh -huh. I'm blind. So we were sort of like slightly on the edge of the group. Um, we'd sort of, you know, duck in and out. And... I guess that was when I sort of really started to, you know, enjoy the youth side of church. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, and then there was a, we went on a church camp and I, I, yeah, again, I never really enjoyed those. There there were so many things that made me frightened um, because as a blind person being taken out of your, you know, your environment means mm -hmm. basically you have to have someone guiding you everywhere. And, mm -hmm. and so I, I, I think that experience for me tended to be dominated by by more fear and and again feeling like I wasn't in the center of any situation um but Anjuna um had had a few sort of moments where I think she felt God's presence very very strongly and at the end of the week she sort of said I, I want to be baptized uh -huh. and on reflection I think I agreed because I wanted to to have got something you know out of the experience i wanted to feel like a fit so i said oh 
you know, me too. I, I was sort of thinking about that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we ended up being baptized on the same day. Mm-hmm. And I was, I, I think that's sort of the first time where I really, really thought about, I guess, my life beyond my family and what that mm-hmm. would look like. And mm-hmm. I guess I thought about Jesus as some someone for me whether my family was there or not, because I guess up until that point, he'd sort of been synonymous with, with my family. Mm-hmm. I felt like my testimony was, I guess, not as good as Anjuna. I was 13 at this point, and Anjuna wasn't a Christian until she came to our youth group. And generally, people I found whose testimonies are, you know, I didn't know Jesus at all, and then I did, are a lot more powerful. So I remember feeling quite self-conscious about that. Mm-hmm. But the actual day, I, I really enjoyed, and, and I remember being baptized and and just bursting into into tears afterwards oh. and i i didn't know why because i hadn't i hadn't expected to at all and i remember standing they had um a pool that was in the floor of our church and i remember just standing in there with with um amy uh, who'd baptized me just being prayed for and and having sort of my favorite worship song playing and it, it was a lovely a lovely feeling the community was was lovely but i think that i guess that is the sort of the the the, the moment i mm, suppose mm, mm, but mm. i think after that point it sort of you know life went on really mm. and then i i went through phases of sort of doing quiet time in the morning consistently ish but not really knowing what i was doing trying to find accessible ways to do bible study because there's a lot of people who talk about highlighting different sections and having a a physical bible and i think that sort of sort of slightly put me off doing bible study because for me it's like it's like being on a laptop which is something i do all day at school Mm -hmm. so it, it just i tried and there you know there were ups and downs in that times where i felt god's presence times when i didn't and there felt like there were more more times that i didn't and so it sort of would fizzle out after a couple of weeks or months and then um quite recently uh, i've started my last year of my college has been really really tricky um for various reasons and so i think that's when i've sort of been more consistently doing these quiet times and praying and cool. and actually where I guess I've had more moments of feeling like actually Jesus I I can see where what mm-hmm. what God's doing I can see that he's here. Mm-hmm. So yeah there as I say there was never a mm. one one moment. <laughs> yeah that's it's, it's beautiful um uh, it's 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 a normal life story really Lydia mm. so many people have those kind of stories I always talk to people and say oh I don't have you know fireworks testimony that's not important we're not looking for fireworks testimony I'm looking for a normal life that's been touched by the hand <laughs> of God and that's what yours has been you know you you kind of alluded to it when you were baptized you you discovered this meant something to you personally you know mm. I always say say this to to young people and I know you're not um, you know you're still in, in your teens and I say this to to younger people that we have to come to a point in our lives where we have a personal experience with Jesus. I can't base my walk with Christ on my parents' walk. I can't base my faith on my pastor's faith or my youth leader's faith. I have to have a personal faith. And that's what you discovered that day. You know, and Jesus watches over his word. The Bible says he watches over his word. So it's up to the Lord. <laughs> and he's pretty good at, at this job. He will watch over that word that is planted in your heart and your life. And anybody listening up today, perhaps you're listening up to Lydia's story and you think, that's me. You know, I've, um, I've really not really got into the Bible. Um, I've given my life to Jesus, but I don't know what's going on. God knows and and he watches over his word and he's going to bring it to fruition in your life. Amazing stuff. Lydia, Mm. wonderful. You know, we could chat a lot about that. But I want to ask you now about The Voice Kids. Now, for anybody, again, listening up who doesn't know The Voice Kids or The Voice is is an international uh, music program. It's all over the world, but uh, you entered into the UK version. um, uh, And it's where um, the professional singers and musicians uh, select um, or or choose a singer to to coach them and to, you know, refine them and to make them into, into professional singers for all intents and purposes. You performed in The Voice kids amazing what was that like again um for me it didn't feel that major i i was 
uh, so I've always loved singing. Oh, yeah, I've always, I've always sang. Um, I, it was sort of how I, I think I sang before I could speak. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but I started to sing when I was about four or five with my grandpa, and he taught me um, some songs in Hebrew, actually, mainly. Oh. Um, and so singing has always been a big part of my life, and I sort of watch shows like X Factor and Britain's Got Talent and sometimes The Voice. Um, and sort of when I was about 10, said, oh, I want to do that. But it never really happened. And then um, we saw that there were auditions happening for The Voice Kids and that all you had to do was submit a video. And so we thought, you know, give that a go. And we did and they got mm-hmm. through. Cool. Um, and then there's another audition process where you go to i think it was cardiff and there were sort of like thousands of people um going in and out and it was quite a big like socially it was quite big and so i I did it and i got through um and it just sort of yeah it was like that started the ball rolling and we were sort of in by that point and it just carried on there were a few more auditions to sort of narrow it down and then uh, it, they, it, it just sort of happened. And yeah. I think it really struck me how <laughs> how not seriously I was taking it because <laughs> we'd got <laughs> we, we got into sort of the, the blind, you know, it was all the people who were going to be on telly doing the blind auditions. Yeah. And throughout the whole process, actually, there were so many parents who were pushing their kids to do to do x y and z and who were coming you know from this thing to another sort of competition and the kids were yeah there was so much pressure and you have to do this in a certain way and you have to do that and me and mum were just sort of there to give it a go (laughs) um and and it was so but at at the same time like i think people who are into sort of performing arts i noticed were were very much more friendly and open and easy to talk to and often again because i'm blind people are tentative about you know coming over and and speaking but people who are as i say in the performing arts world whatever it is tend to be less perturbed i think and so i really enjoyed that and i enjoyed the fact that it you know they the judges had their backs to me Mm -hmm. so in theory it was my voice not my vision that made them turn mm-hmm. although i'm not sure if that is actually the case so, I, I do wonder if they were told but yeah yeah well I, I've, I've watched the youtube version I, I, I don't think they are told you know they don't get much lowdown on the under contestants because they have to be objective mm-hmm. in their choice and you can see it in the faces when they turned around uh and they they saw you were blind they were impressed you know it's like wow <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um the blind auditions that's when you sing to the backs of these artists and then somebody yeah. turns around and select you and takes you on further who turned around for you i had paloma and pixie uh turn around uh so the two sort of female judges i guess yeah i chose pixie Uh which looking back on it i'm not quite sure why i did i think yeah i don't really know i think it was just sort of pressure because they they sort of talk to you for a bit and then there's all this dramatic like who are you going to choose who are you going to choose and yeah, i just yeah. sort of said the first thing that came <laughs> into my head really <laughs> fantastic and, and how far did you get then i then got to the battles and i was put with uh, ray and adia the names were um and we did a song somewhere only we know um by keen and then ray got through after that so that was sort of the end of it for me oh. um but it was a really lovely experience you yeah. know to to Fantastic. see all of these different types of people um, in this situation and yeah. and to get to know people, it, it was really interesting. And, and do you mind me asking, how old were you at that time? Oh, gosh. Um, I would have been about 14, 15, okay, I think. Okay, 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 okay. Amazing, yeah, amazing. Yeah, maybe yeah. Amazing, Lydia, amazing. What an experience that was. Uh, we're going to be chatting a little bit more. Please stay right there. We're going to take a little break and be back after this. You're listening to The Reality, produced by Sure Reality, a listener-supported radio ministry. We depend on the generous gifts of our listener to produce this program. You can help reach millions of folks with the sure reality of the message of Jesus by becoming a Sure Reality Vision Partner. To partner with us, please visit the website, surereality.net, and click on Become a Vision Partner.
If you've just joined us, hearty hello, my name's Dudley Anderson. Thank you indeed for joining us. This is The Reality. It's a half-hour talk show talking about the reality of real life in Jesus Christ. Changed lives, change lives. And as we share the lives of people touched and changed by the reality of Christ, it certainly has an impact upon our lives. If we've said anything in the program so far, or indeed further on, as we continue listening to Lydia's story, that makes sense to you, or you have some questions, I would love to hear from you. Dudley at surereality.net. Email me, if you will, dudley at surereality.net. Well, today we're talking to Lydia Beach. We've heard how Lydia grew up in a Christian environment, but the day that she was baptized, she had an encounter with the living God and decided to surrender her life to Jesus. Like so many Christians, Lydia did not have a dramatic before and after story when she became a Christian. When she was baptized, the Holy Spirit impressed upon her that this was her moment. None of us can base our faith walk upon our parents or our pastors or our youth leaders. We need to develop a personal relationship with the living God through an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Lydia is a singer, and she had the privilege of participating in the popular TV show The Voice Kids in the UK in her early teens. The Voice Kids is run in many countries and involves participants performing before famous singers who have their backs to them. And then, while the participant is singing, the artist who is impressed with their performance and believes they have potential then turns around. The participant then selects the artist that they hope will help them win the competition. And Lydia progressed to the next round of that competition. Lydia Beach is a young blind lady with great ambition to use her talents to serve God and serve people. Let's find out more as we continue talking to Lydia Beach. Lydia, so good to have you with us today on The Reality. And uh, God's shown His reality in your life. And, uh, you know, performing in front of uh, uh, so many people on on national TV, it's a testimony at the end of the day. Um, You are a believer, a follower of Jesus. Now, we have said that you're blind, uh, Lydia. How did you become blind? I was born blind. Um, I have a genetic condition with a long name, Labour's congenital amaurosis. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, remember that. (laughs) But, I, yeah, so I've always been blind. Uh, I think my mum noticed when I was four months old, when I wasn't looking at things um, in the same way as other babies. Um, So it's it's always been a a thing, really. I have light perception, uh, and I can see sort of contrast. So, like, black on white white on black um so i do have a little bit of vision but i don't have enough to do much usefulness like things with so i read braille i use a cane um oh. yeah so is that sort of a neurological condition in, in, in your nervous system or what what would have caused that no it's to do with my retina so oh. at the back of your eye you have a uh, sort of a a sheet of cells i guess called yeah, your retina right. and they have uh, rod, rod and cone cells that detect light and um color and sort of the light hits them and then they send the signal to your brain through your optic nerve and right. so it, the the issue isn't with my brain or my optic nerves which right. connects your eyes and your brain so it's is the actual in eye. the eye itself okay yeah. i get it yeah interesting um Obviously, I'm not blind. I don't know a lot of blind people. Um, what is, you know, often as, as, a, as a seeing person and, and I see blind folk and I, I wonder, life must be quite difficult. What is the most difficult thing for you, Lydia, being blind? The most difficult? I think that's a, a difficult question to answer because it's quite big mm-hmm. and there's lots and lots of different factors. I think some days there'll be lots and lots of things that make make it hard and other days there'll be things that you know that 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 don't you know sometimes i'll have a good day and Mm. and i'll be able to do something maybe maybe not sometimes better sometimes differently because i'm blind and i'll think you know this is this is good this is what god wants me to do to be uh, you know i'm here and then yeah other days it's not so not so good i think Mm. i think maybe the hardest thing is feeling like i can't fulfill my purpose um so i've always wanted to help people that's something that it has been that i just always wanted to to do um and 
there are there are so many situations where I can't be useful. I remember in my year six, I was in tears because I couldn't help tidy the classroom, oh. and everyone thought I was so weird because <laughs> they were all moaning about tidying the classroom. And <laughs> you just wanted to get I, in know, there, yeah. I just wanted to get in there because actually there were you know they were running around with pens and pencils, putting things oh, away, and there was yeah. such a a community feel to to doing something which I I couldn't do because oh. I would just slow you know slow things down yeah, um yeah, yeah. and so i think i think that helping people is a privilege and and when i can't which is you know a lot of the time and and i think often i feel it most when i'm in church because church is such a community of of helpfulness you know like um you know if you go around to someone's house and there are lots of other church church people there and everyone's sort of making tea pouring drinks passing food around serving each other and that there, there's so much of that that i can't access or or i'm the one being served being helped mm-hmm. and it's not the other way around mm-hmm. and and that is something that i think i really struggle with yeah mm, i get it amazing amazing well i admire you i admire blind folk in fact anybody with a you know a, an impediment like this it's uh, it's it's profound uh, how you can get on with life and, and 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 live a normal life so well done on that um lydia i've read you've said nothing will hold you back nothing will hold you back the scripture says that we should not hold back <laughs> we've got to get out there and do what god's called us to do what is your what is your ambition in life what do you want to do um i want to help people uh in the best way that i can and i think that part of what being blind has given me is um people skills that I probably wouldn't have acquired otherwise. I think in every social situation, before I can really make headway, I have to get past people's assumptions about me. Because if, you know, you you know, you said you you look at, at blind people and you admire them um, because they're blind, because their blindness is the first thing that you see. And and for a lot of people that's the same, but also that same admiration gets in the way mm. of interaction mm, uh, or it. it's an assumption it's I an assumption it. that oh they're blind they can't do xyz or they're blind there's and often it becomes about it's, it becomes about the people and their own insecurities you know this person's blind what if i get it wrong what if i mm. offend them what if i do the wrong thing and so there's so many assumptions and so many worries on that person's front that I have to break down and plow through. You know, I have to make them feel comfortable and smile and say it's okay or, you know, I need you to guide me like this or, or mm-hmm. make a joke or do things to make them feel comfortable. That Often that leads to a discussion and I find out more about them because, you know, in an interaction, there's, there's talking involved, especially if you can't see because there's no eye contact. And so mm-hmm. I try and establish connection. And I think that has meant that I... Yeah, I'm I'm good at um I've learned to be good at at communicating, at talking, at, at getting down to the root of of someone's sort of mm. psyche, I guess, figuring out what makes them tick, how best to interact. Yeah. And so cool. I want to use those skills. Um I want to be a counselor. Um and much later down the line, I'd like to be a prison chaplain. Wow. I'm in mean, like a high security wow. prison, probably. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And, uh, and, and and music, do you have any ambition with your singing? I did think about music therapy at one point. I might um, do that. I think I love music again because music does a lot that words can't. And I think, I mean, there's no higher compliment then it sounds uh, odd, but there's no higher compliment than when I make someone cry uh, <laughs> because of my <laughs> because of my music because Lovely. it means that they felt something, yeah, yeah. and I think that ties in quite closely with you know with being a counsellor with getting with making people feel something and figuring out what that is and where it's come from and so yeah I definitely want to want to use my music to to connect with people um, I I want to keep it going I love singing um, so I I. I've started over the summer, I've done some singing lessons, so I might sort of do that as a bit of a side hustle, um, mm-hmm. you know, just use it as a way in, really. Mm. Do you sing in, yeah. in, your, in the worship team at church? Yes, I love doing that. Fantastic. I, I love that, yeah. 
Tremendous. Lydia, it's been fantastic. It's been, if you don't mind me saying, eye-opening chatting with you. <laughs> and I really appreciate your, your company and your input. Thank you so much for joining us on The Reality. Thank you. Well, today on The Reality, we've been speaking to Lydia Beach. Lydia was born blind. Born into a Christian home, she discovered at a point in her life when she was baptized that she needs to develop her own walk with Jesus, a personal walk with God. We can't base our walk with God upon our family, upon our parents or our pastors. We need to develop a personal faith with the living God. This is what Lydia did. Lydia is a singer and a musician, and she had the privilege of participating in The Voice UK. What a great opportunity that was. But more than anything, Lydia has encouraged me today to give my all in serving Jesus and indeed in serving my fellow man. Lydia's greatest ambition is to help people. And that is such an encouragement to me. I'd like to share with you a scripture from Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 10. It tells us to enlarge the place of our tent, stretch our tent curtains wide and not hold back. Lengthen your cords, it says, and strengthen your gates. God's word to you and to me today, to Lydia, to all of us, is to not hold back, to give our all for the Lord. Elsewhere, the scripture tells us to make the most of every opportunity, to seize the day, making the most of every opportunity by the wisdom that God gives us and opportunities that God gives us. Why? Because it tells us that the days we live in are evil. Indeed, they are. And we need to appropriate every opportunity to share the love of God and to help our fellow man. What an encouragement to me and what an encouragement indeed to you. If we've said anything in the program today that has just, you know, made sense to you, you have some comments or questions, or maybe you'd like some prayer, I would love to hear from you. You can email me, dudley at surereality.net. If you'd like to know more about what we've been talking about, if you'd like me to pray with you to make the most of an opportunity in your life, I encourage you to write to me by email. It's dudley at surereality.net. The Reality is a Christian radio talk show produced by Sure Reality. Sure Reality is a ministry supported by you, its listeners. If you feel prompted by the Holy Spirit to sow into this work to help us to produce these radio programs that are broadcast around the world and podcast online, if you'd like to help us, then please consider becoming a vision partner, sowing into the kingdom of God, investing in the gospel at these times, making the most of every opportunity, as the scripture says, the days we live in are evil. If that's you, if you'd like to become a vision partner with Sure Reality, please visit our website surereality.net and click on the menu option, Become a Vision Partner. I'll leave that scripture with you one more time. Isaiah 54 verse 2, perhaps just for you today. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Strengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. So it is from me, Dudley Anderson, to you as always. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And God bless you.